Hey there, it's Carly with the Expat Focus podcast. I'm an Australian living in France, and on today's show, I'm talking expat life in South Korea with someone who surprised me actually with her honesty about how she's finding her experience. My guest is Jasmine Turner, an American YouTuber who you can check out at Jasmine T TV. She's got a great sense of humor and her videos are really funny, covering everything from getting naked in public at a Korean bathhouse. I didn't even have time to question my decisions. I'm just looking around and I'm like, she naked, she naked, she ain't got no ass. <laughs> we can do this, yes, we can do this. To trying out the local dating scene, Jasmine is an English teacher living in the city of Daegu. Oh, and she's a self-confessed germaphobe. Jasmine's not having your typical expat experience in South Korea, and she's going to explain why. Jasmine, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you guys for reaching out. To start with, can you tell me, how did you end up in South Korea? That's probably a question that I ask myself every day. <laughs> how did I end up here? <laughs> um, I was looking for something different. I was stuck in my millennial life back home in the States. And why I chose South Korea was purely based on, um, I don't know if you've heard of International TEFL Academy, but they had a country chart, a country comparison chart on their website, and it breaks down countries by their ESL requirements there. So TEFL is um, teaching English as a foreign language? Yes. Right. Yeah, so it breaks down your contract terms, your um, education requirements, how much the jobs typically pay, the average cost of living. And I looked at this chart and at the time I was looking, South Korea basically paid the most for the least amount of experience. And I don't have a background in education. My degree is actually in real estate and business management. Right. So I said, okay, South Korea, I guess it is. <laughs> so I wish I could say, you know, I came to Korea for the culture, the food, the temples, but no, <laughs> pretty much came because they pay the most. They give me a job, they pay for housing. All my bills are paid for. I think I pay for, as far as living expenses, I should say, I pay for a Wi-Fi egg and that's it. Wow. And I guess that's something that I didn't actually realize is that just because you get a teaching English as a foreign language qualification, which is what I assume you did, it doesn't mean you can necessarily go anywhere to teach. Well, you may not be able to, your CELTA or your TEFL, whatever you get, may not be enough to go to places like the UAE because it's so competitive there. You need the background in teaching or in education and most people with master's degrees I've heard end up going there. That's so South Korea for you just opened that amazing opportunity of most expenses paid and will give you that experience you need. Yeah. South Korea provided a way for me to get out of America. <laughs> <laughs> that too. It wasn't so much about the teaching experience. Uh, I mean, the kids are cool. I do my job. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was more about at the time, I was just so focused on, okay, I just quit my job. I have my CELTA certification. Now I need to put this to work. And so what's it like living in South Korea? Okay. So I don't know how I thought it would be. This is my first time out of the U.S. So, of course, I didn't think it would be this utopia. But uh, I don't think I was mentally prepared for the change especially if it's your first time out of your home, out of your comfort zone, you will cry. <laughs> so, <laughs> there will definitely be tears. Uh, I guess if I could say, give anybody a tip, it would be be prepared to be mentally unprepared. Um, it's like the first week, everything is just so new. You're just You're just taking it all in. And then the second and third week, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm still here. <laughs> this is real and reality sets in. I just gave up my entire life back home. And for me, I couldn't go back because the people at work told me I couldn't come back. <laughs> so so it's stop. like, it's South Korea <laughs> robust, basically. <laughs> yeah, it was like, okay, do I follow? Uh, do 
I follow my heart? <laughs> do I follow what I feel that I'm supposed to be doing with my life? Or do I just stay in my comfort zone and know that there's no turning back to turning back to what I knew? Those first weeks must have been such an adrenaline rush. I mean, as you said, you've you've basically just leapt without a safety net into this new life in South Korea. I guess I would compare it to imagine if you go to an amusement park and you're the first couple of hours you're there, you're like, yes, I want to ride everything. <laughs> I want to eat everything. And then hours go by and you're kind of ready to go home, but you can't go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, it is. I am trying to, I don't want to fall in the trap of, I, you know, when you are in something new, you have different cultures and people do things differently. And I don't want to say that anything that I see in Korea is wrong. It's just different. And I'm trying to embrace that idea. So if I go into a restroom and I see bar soap, <laughs> you know, as me as a germaphobe and seeing the way certain things are done, um, I just tell myself, okay, this is, this is different. So you will have a lot of conversations with yourself. If you thought you talked to yourself before coming to a new country, you really talk to yourself. You have a lot of conversations with yourself um, when you get to someplace new. And I was just telling myself, okay, you have to do this. You have to take advantage of this moment because like back home, you would not get this level of seclusion of this alone time to be with yourself, to learn about yourself, to work on things that you've always wanted to work on. And I, and I used to turn distractions a lot in my YouTube videos because if I was home on Sundays, maybe I would be out having mimosas with a friend <laughs> or Friday night I go to a bar or something like that. Here, I'm kind of living on a mountain <laughs> and transportation is not really the easiest off this mountain. I'm kind of uh, re have to rely on a shuttle. And so Friday nights, I'm kind of just either sitting, having to work on my own stuff, and same with Sundays. So um, I'm kind of forced to just be with myself. Was that something that you uh, were expecting when you moved? Because you have all your accommodation and everything paid for. So you're living on campus, I suppose, where you're teaching or? Yes. Right. And so yeah. did, did you expect that sort of personal isolation? Well, I work is a bit different from, I guess, your normal, like, is I don't work at a private school or, or they call it a hagwon and I don't work at a public school. It's called an, well, it's an English village. And there are about 40 other foreign teachers here. So I'm not as alone as I would be, you know, if I worked out in the countryside and a hagwon or something, but they probably aren't people I would talk to back home. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> there's still that loneliness effect or, or it, it, you just kind of don't, and you also don't have your independence. You can't call it Uber. And we're so far out that a, calling a taxi cost a good bit because you have to pay for the taxi to come and then go back. Yeah. We're just kind of secluded a bit. And I didn't think it would be this way because, um, Daegu is the third largest city. And I thought that the, there would be a bigger foreigner population. Okay. I did not answer that question the way that I, wanted to <laughs> but that's actually one of the things I really enjoy about your YouTube videos, Jasmine, is that you're really candid and you're really honest about the experiences that you're having and you're not sugarcoating it with, you know, uh, some crazy adventuring shots and, and amazing music and telling people you're having the time of your life. You're being really raw about what your expat experience is in South Korea. You must be having some good times though, because you're still there. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm here because I have personal goals that I need to achieve. Basically, when I get a paycheck, I'm putting that into my into a project. And also, when I leave Korea, I don't want to work for anyone, so I need savings. For some for certain countries, if you want like a freelance visa, you have to show that you can sustain yourself uh, without a job, right? So there's a me, higher goal for you. Yeah, there's a higher goal, which is which is why I'm still here. It's not oh my gosh, Korea. <laughs> 
And honestly, I get comments that say, go home. Why don't you just leave? Because of that higher goal is why I don't leave. I wouldn't be able to accomplish this back in the U.S. And, and I'm realizing this opportunity. I'm taking advantage of it. Is there anything yeah. that has surprised you about South Korea or that you've enjoyed more than you thought you would? Things that surprise me. Uh, okay. Because I'm, I'm thinking about some things right now and I'm just trying to figure out how to put them <laughs> in, a, in a certain way. I say the amount of plastic surgery surprised me. The way, even when you walk into a classroom, maybe you can't, your lesson plan wouldn't work because you didn't know that boys and girls won't sit next to each other. Like, I didn't know this. <laughs> so, the, or how, I, I really want, to, I'm trying to highlight some positive things, but it was some things where I was just like, oh my gosh. Uh, what I don't want to do is talk so bad about the country, but when I tell you that bullying is a thing here. Bullying, plastic sur surgery, abuse is a thing here. Gosh. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the stuff that surprised me. But other things, when I did watch YouTube videos about how maybe like the, I don't know, uh, people's negative experiences, maybe with older people, I've actually had some nice encounters. Like, Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out how to word this. I, mean, I want to give you <laughs> a positive message, but there is some stuff that is genuinely messed up <laughs> here. And I and in and, and my looking through American eyes, that makes you very thankful for the way that you were brought up in the society that you grew up in. Because... There are some times where I see a student, most of the time a little girl, who has such individuality, but I know that when she gets older, somebody is going to snuff out her individuality. Some media, some man, something is going to happen, and it sucks that she's going to be brought up in that. Okay, so that's that's the kind of stuff that I think about when I'm here and when I'm teaching students when I'm walking around and I see all these advertisements, like you're on the Metro and you see advertisements for plastic surgery or, or like skin whitening and stuff like that. And because it's such a homogeneous society, yeah, you see Korean people in advertisements, but you also see white people. <laughs> you don't really see black people, but you see white people because I think that's who they're trying to imitate. So there are actually a few other black teachers there are misconceptions that they have of black people. I've had my skin rubbed <laughs> because they don't know, they may think that the black comes off. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> um, and another teacher, she was going by to check papers and the kid, because you know the top of your hand is darker than the palm of your hand, and he could not grasp why <laughs> oh, God. Of her hand was so she she had to stop class and she wanted everybody to look at where the palm of the hand and like the top starts and show them their faint line and they were all amazed that they had a small differentiation between <laughs> like the palm and the top of their hand it and must yeah, be I really satisfying in some way as bizarre as those experiences sound, to kind of be educating these students at the same time? Yeah, it is a way, because we may be the first black person that they've seen, depending on where they're coming from. And they Maybe lives. the first time they've had, they've seen someone with braids. So it does get a little annoying if a child grabs your braids and they didn't ask, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just... Yeah, I, I would say, so there's things like that as a as a black person in Korea, um, having to try to educate people about you, <laughs> that you would think some things are common sense, but if they don't know, then I guess they just don't know. But also, if you are wanting to date, that is <laughs> it's going to be difficult. And I would say it's going to be difficult for foreign women in general. Because, you know, when I first got here, I was excited about dating. 
And then I was talking to one of uh, the male teachers. He says that the foreign women are on the bottom of the dating poll here because Korean men, they want Korean women. And there are success stories, don't get me wrong, but generally. (laughs) And then foreign men... They get the pics of the foreign women and the Korean women. (laughs) And the foreign women are just sitting here like, what do we do? (laughs) I don't don't know what we do. Your dating app adventures are one of my uh, (laughs) favorite topics that you YouTube about. Um, And you've had quite a few, but uh, does this mean that you've kind of experienced enough? As far as Korea, I am done with the dating apps here (laughs) for sure. I also think that God put me in Korea so I would focus on myself. (laughs) So it seems like your expat experience in Korea, it's giving you a really good life detox on so many levels. (laughs) What I need to do is get out of of my city. Um, I actually have planned trips. I haven't really traveled that much since I've been here, which is something I would definitely recommend that you do because you do need that, you do need to have certain getaways, but because I have certain goals that I'm trying to reach, I'm not spending all my money on traveling. So you haven't prioritized hopping to other Asian countries while you're there? Not at this moment. There are other answers that I truly wanted to give. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh my gosh. Um, but the truth comes tumbling out. <laughs> yeah, it does. And, but what this is what I don't, I don't want. I I wanted to give because there are positive things to Korea. I mean, people live here for years. But I don't know. It's just, it's just not for. It's just not for everybody. And so, you know, everyone's experience overseas is unique, and this is your unique experience. Uh, yeah. Working a job where you're a little bit isolated. And, yeah. and as you said, you could, you could be traveling, you could be exploring more of Korea. You know what you're not doing that could potentially change your perspective. And right. they say that being aware of that is the step one, right? So yeah, being aware of it. So we, we could speak at the end of your contract after you've taken in more of Korea, mm-hmm. been traveling a bit more, had a few other experiences, and your uh, attitude towards Korea could have completely changed. Maybe not completely. Some, some, <laughs> yeah, some aspects of Korea could change. Now, how certain aspects of the society is, that, that won't change. I don't see that changing. <laughs> You're having these experiences in Korea. How do you think they're actually changing you as a person? I am, well, this is what I hope, (laughs) that I'm gaining more confidence, asking myself, well, what if this doesn't work out? Maybe I should tweak it like this. And now I'm in Korea and I'm just like, I'm just going to go for it. So I kind of stopped telling myself, you know, "Mm, no, maybe this won't work out. Let's just do it and see if it works out. Um, And if I fail, hell, at least um, now I know. Uh... So yeah, I think I'm I think I'm building more confidence, which is something I've been wanting to get for quite a long time. So what have you started doing to work towards your ultimate goal? Well, well, what can you tell me about at this point? Well, of course, the YouTube channel, I did that before I left and honestly, I was the ne- I was never the type to put myself on social media like that, which kind of makes you stronger because you're going to get comments and stuff like that basically trying to tear you down i've also started a new channel called air republic theater is basically an online talent competition it's a platform for singers comedians rappers to uh, showcase their talents and give off a positive message because especially in america even though people from all over can submit a lot of our music, our entertainment, does not have a positive message, especially in the black community. I realized this, and I'm thinking to myself, what's stopping me for trying to create something that can 
somewhat change it or allow viewers to come and get a positive message. There will be a winner and that winner receives prize money. And then the other project is actually an online store that I'm putting together. I can't go into too much detail, but anything that I do, it has to have some type of giving back factor to it. So this product and percentage of the proceeds will go towards an organization that has not been chosen yet because (laughs) it's like I say, I'm still working on it while I'm here. I guess I'm in a way sacrificing some of my personal time and things that I could be doing, but I feel it's worth it because the end goal will help others. Jasmine, that's a really honorable thing to do and and more than other people might do overseas while they're experiencing expat life. I realize it may be unique. So if you come to Korea and you say, well, yeah, she seems miserable. She's in her room. <laughs> it's because, but I, There's a reason I, for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my room for a reason. <laughs> There's a bigger picture. I'm setting a foundation so that I can experience more and have fuller experiences. And when it blossoms, then I can sit back and and know that I've fulfilled something. Now let me go see this temple or something. I don't know, you know, like- (laughs) Then I'll have some fun. (laughs) Yeah, now let's have a little bit more fun. Thank you so much for taking the time today to share your very (laughs) unique expat perspective with Expat Focus. I'm wishing you so much luck for the rest of your contract and all those amazing projects that you've got and that you're knuckling down and really focusing on while you're there. I definitely do appreciate that. Thank you. Well, that's it for today. If you'd like to discuss this episode, ask questions, or share your own experiences about living in South Korea, be sure to head to expatfocus.com, follow the links to our forums or Facebook groups. Remember, you can check out our previous episodes. They're at expatfocus.com forward slash podcast. You'll also find them on iTunes and I'll catch you next time.